Hey, this is Passy, and welcome to another Adobe Animate CC tutorial. Here at Passy's World of ICT, we're hoping to bring you as many tutorials as these as we can. Now, today's one is a fantastic uh, film old time countdown player that you'd see before the movie in the olden days. This is a great little thing you can make and animate and then you can use it for other projects at the start of an animation, just have kind of the movie timer countdown like this and, and that'll be fun and, and generate some interest. So let's get started straight away and we need to start up Adobe Animate CC and we're using the 2018 version and straight away we're going to do a new action script 3.0 now we need to change the size here of our our stage area this white canvas because at the moment it's 550 by 400 now for our animation if we click in here on the width we're just going to make it 600 uh, by 400 because then we've got even numbers and it works better all right, now the first thing we're doing is the background. Now the background needs to be this kind of old school gray color. So click on the stage where it's white, make it old school gray. And our next thing is we have to make um, our two crosshair lines. Now with those, we want them to be right in the center. So we get rulers. We can use rulers in Adobe Animate to do that. So let's go to view up the top here and view rulers. And that turns on the rulers and we've got like this ruler across the top here and one down the side. Now how you use these rulers is to get our guidelines is press the mouse button down on the ruler and drag it down. Now because we made our 600 by 400 we need to get to the 200 mark and drop it there. That'll be exactly halfway across our page. And if you look at the ruler at the top here going across, it's kind of at zero and goes to 600, which remember was the width of our canvas. So this sideways ruler we're bringing in, that needs to come across, hang on, click down in the ruler and drag. That needs to come across and see how the red line sort of clicks in there at 300 to the left of 300. So we know that's exactly on 300. So there are guidelines and we've divided our page into four perfect quarters. Now we get onto the line tool. And with the line tool, we just want the stroke size to be one. Paint bucket is no color. Now how you get no color is it'll happen automatically because we're doing the line. Uh, now the stroke color needs to be black. Okay, so you just click on that. It gives you all the panel and we pick black. Now we need to make these uh, right directly on the line. So we go up the top here, push down on the mouse. And if you hold down the shift key, that helps keep it straight as well. And we're going down the bottom with that one. And then we're going across the page with this other one here, the horizontal line. And it doesn't matter if you go a little bit over the edge of the canvas, because when we play the animation, uh, that won't show up anyway. Uh, that's got those lines made. So let's see that they're actually there by turning the guides off. So if we go view and we go to guides and we'll just clear those guides. Okay, so we've got our cross lines there. Uh, that's our background finished for now. So we'll go down bottom left hand corner and name that layer background because that's its name. And we'll put a padlock on that because we're finished with that one. All right, now actually don't put the padlock on yet take it off because we need to uh, work out how long our animation is going to be so this one is actually going to be 100 frames so on the timeline go across and click at 100 and in there if we right click we want to just insert a frame not a keyframe or a blank keyframe but just insert frame that'll kind of take our animation from number one right up to 100 there and that background's going to hang around the whole time. So now we've done that. Now we can padlock it up because that's ready to go. Next, we need another layer because remember we had those two circles and we draw them on separate layers because if you draw them on the same layer and they bump into each other, they'll do that cookie cutting uh, flash animate type of effect where they cut each other in half and things like that. So the first one we're going to do is the inner circle. So down the very, very bottom left hand corner here, you click new layer. That makes a new layer in here. This one's going to be the inner circle. So we'll just name that inner circle and press enter. Now we go across to our tools here and we need the oval tool. 
Now paint bucket color, we don't want to fill it in with any colors. So you use this one next to the rainbow in the top right hand corner, this diagonal red slash, which means no color. And for the stroke color, we want this to be white. So we click in the white. Now the thickness of this is going to be three. So at the moment stroke is on one, best to just go in there and click and that needs to be on 3.00. Now we go onto the canvas here. Uh, hold down the shift key, which will make the uh, ellipse sphere perfectly round. So make sure you've got your left hand on shift and we just draw a circle here. Now, onto the black arrow and select that circle because we know actually that we want this to be a particular size. So make sure up here you clicked on properties, not on library. And we're fairly close here. We've got width uh, in the top right hand corner of 308 and height of 308. Now we want that to be exactly 300. So we're just going to change that to 300 and make the other one 300 as well. Now keep an eye on these because sometimes as you move the circle, um, animate changes those values. So just check them every now and then. So now we go onto the black arrow tool. We've got the circle selected. Now go on the circle so you've got the plus kind of the north south east west cross lines the cross the cross lines it's much easier probably to use it move it using the arrow keys on the computer rather than trying to mess around with the mouse so we're just using the arrow keys and we're going to try and get that as centered as we can now there is a way we could do this by getting on the mouse and holding that and see on the left hand side as I'm holding this with the mouse and moving it there's some red lines to show me where it is on the rulers and if we do the math if that's 400 long all together and we're 300 for our circle well then we need 50 at the top and 50 at the bottom so it adds to our 400 so we need to get that guy right on 50 and then if you look on the left hand ruler the other one should be on 350 then we know that's correct that way and for the top one we need to be on 150 and 450. So that is exactly centered because of the rulers. You can see we've got naught to 50 this side. And if you go from 450 to 600, that'll be 150 on the other side. So we've got 150 each side going across. Going up and down, we've got 50 from the top. And this is 400 long on the canvas. So we've got another 50 from the bottom. So that is definitely correct. So put the padlock on that one. Now we need to do the same thing again and make another circle down in the very bottom left hand corner, new layer, double click in there. This one's going to be the outer circle. So that's going to be our outer circle. And this one we make the same way. And so what we do is we just get back on the oval tool again. It's all set up for us. Hold down shift and draw another circle. Don't worry too much about its size. On the black arrow tool, click on it. On its properties, it's 336 by 336. Uh, I think this one is probably better off sort of around 320 by 320. I think that'll give us a nice gap between them when we move it into position. Okay, now, We've got it 320 by 320. We need to move this one and this is where it's a bit tricky. We just kind of do it by eye. Use the, now with the mouse, click on it and make sure you've got the crisscross arrows. Then after that, you can just use your keyboard arrow keys. And it's kind of a matter of uh, lining it up by eye. And that actually looks quite even. So I think it's going to be all right there. Okay, that's it. I think we've got the two round circles, one inside the other. So the outer circle go down to its layer now and padlock it as well. Okay, things are going well here. Um, what we need to do next is we need to make the line which spins around the outside. And this is probably the longest part of doing it. And then we add the numbers on at the end as the last thing. And that's going to be fairly easy. All right. So we need to make a new layer. Down the bottom left hand corner, click that icon, new layer. This one we will call the spinning, the spinning line because it's going to spin 
round and round and round and round as it does the countdown. All right, now we need to draw the line. So we go onto the line tool and this time the pencil is on white from our circles. We want to change that back to black. We want the size of this to be 1.0. It's just a skinny line. Now you need to think about this. Uh, you might want to just draw the line like this at the starting position. But if you do that, when it moves round due to the mathematics of the rectangle being wider, uh, it's not going to be long enough to go in this corner. We want it kind of uh, going right to the edge of the rectangle as it spins around, which means we have to draw it in its longest position first. So we're going to just get in the middle here and we're going to draw a line out through that corner and then we know it's going to be long enough uh, to fill up. And you can just go over the edge while you do this. That's not a problem. So we've sort of gone corner to corner there. Uh, now, with that line, we need to turn it into a movie clip. So we're going to just click on it so that it is selected and then we right click and we go to this spot right down the bottom of this menu convert to symbol and we're converting it to a symbol and this one the type needs to be movie clip make sure the registration there is right in the center and this one is going to be called our spinning line Okay, and we say okay, and now that's a movie clip that's in the library. Now the thing is this plus sign you notice has appeared in the middle, that's the registration point. Now if we leave it in the middle, just when it turns, that's a pivot point. And what's going to happen is we'll have something spinning like this pen that I'm holding here. That's not what we want, not what we want. We want it to pivot from its end so that it spins around like this. Now to get it to pivot from the end, we need to move that plus sign from the middle right down to the bottom here. Okay, now how we do that is we have to go in and edit the movie clip. So if you double click on this guy in the library, so we go to the library, you can see that is our spinning line. If we double click on that, it'll take us down into edit mode on it. Now, if you go up to the top left hand corner here, see spinning line is what we're in at the moment. Our movie is up in scene one. So we're actually kind of down inside our movie, inside the movie clip that's a spinning line editing it. Now, how we get this plus sign to the end is uh, not actually grabbing the plus sign and moving it, but you grab the line and move it. So we're just going to uh, take the line using our, well, we can use our mouse for a while and then we'll just use the arrow keys to fine tune it. Now, at the moment, uh, it's there. Now, this is very tricky. If you don't get this exact, it's not going to look too good later on. Now, that's kind of like that. It's probably going to be okay. Uh, but you need to try and get this exact as you can. Okay, we'll try it at that. Okay, so that is edited, we're finished. So if we go up the top here, where is the spinning line, to save it and exit, you just actually click back into scene one and that automatically saves it and puts it back to the movie where we are. So we can click on this guy now and move it round. And you can see our registration points down there. Now we need to rotate this because remember it's at the 12 o'clock position to start off with in uh, frame number one. So we go to the third tool down, the free transform tool. And when we go there, you can see there's this uh, sort of turnaround symbol appears like the circle. And with that, you can turn it around and we're going to turn it around so it's vertical and we're going to just grab it and use our arrow keys to take it down and put it right in the middle there. So like that. So that's going to be our starting position for our line. So there it is right at the start. And if we press control and enter just to see how that's looking, uh, it seems to line up fairly well. Okay, now, the next step. We're going to go in fives, and 
it starts off at 12 o'clock then next we need it to go around to three o'clock position so we go to actually frame number five and click in here down the bottom and then we're going to press f6 but if you've got a laptop like ours you might have to hold down the function key while you do it f6 just inserts a keyframe there and at that frame we're going to get our turnaround tool now things are a bit big here but if we go over to this part here on the left just off the corner you'll get the turnaround tool and we need to turn that round so it's kind of sitting right on that line there okay and that one's done now at number 10 we do the same thing you can rather than press f6 you can just right click and go insert keyframe and that'll do the same thing and at this position we need to make it down to six o'clock so it's pointing down the bottom there now you can see it's slightly out of line i think but we'll see how we go at 15 click in 15 again right click insert keyframe or you can do your f6 to do that and we need to get off one of the corners just off the corner till we get the turnaround symbol turn that round that's going to be at uh, nine o'clock if you know your times on the old-fashioned clock although a lot of us use digital these days and finally at 20 uh, we're going to finish going all the way around so I might just do this one with f6 just to be different and we've put a keyframe in there and here we're going to uh, go down to this corner till we get the turnaround symbol and move it up back to the 12 o'clock position all right so at the moment if we drag the red slider we've got kind of 12 o'clock actually let's just go into the black arrow tool so we don't sort of see all the free transform stuff so we've got 12 o'clock and it's going around it's at ah now i think i've messed something up here because that arrow is what have i done what have i done here ah we're at 12 o'clock but then hang on at number five that arrow is going across like that it's not all the way around at three o'clock oh my goodness okay back onto the transform tool and let's move it around so it is at three o'clock exactly now let's check out what's been going on here at the ten o'clock it was supposed to be around at six o'clock not sure what I did there maybe I was looking at the lines on the side and not this uh, middle central line okay we'll get it to six o'clock at 15 it is okay the line and at 20 it's so okay. no it's not okay it's not round enough yet uh, okay so 12 o'clock so let's check these out we've got this one here it's definitely going straight up and down number five is definitely at three o'clock let's just get on the black arrow tool at three o'clock and 10 is at six o'clock 15 is at nine o'clock and 20 is at 12 o'clock so we've got those three places there sorry that took a little while and was a little bit messy <laughs> let's try and do the rest okay now we need to get flash to animate flash to do the in-between bit so it's at 12 o'clock then at the moment it's just jumping to three o'clock we need animate to fill in all the gaps how you do that is go down the bottom in the timeline here between numbers one and five and if we right click and create a classic tween and then we go in between five and ten and create a classic tween go in between 10 and 15 and right click and create classic tween go in between 15 and 20 right click and create classic tween now the reason we've used classic tween you're thinking why don't we use motion tween because it's doing motion it's going round in a circle uh the reason is with motion tween we there's a problem that it'll do three o'clock and six o'clock then for some reason um animate thinks oh it's going to be quicker to go around backwards to get back to 12 so it won't keep going clockwise it'll suddenly start spinning the other way around so that's why the classic tween works best so let's just press control and enter and you can see the first part's happening then there's a big long delay because it's waiting till we get to the end of the movie but that's working fine now 
do we want to go through that whole sort of process again, going to 25 and 30 and 35 and 40 and moving it around to 12 o'clock and to three o'clock and to six o'clock and to nine o'clock and back to 12 o'clock? No, we don't. We can copy frames. Now to select frames in flash down on this timeline, you can't mess around while you're doing it with the clicking. You just have your finger ready on the button to click and you go there and you click and start dragging straight away. So you've got to click and start dragging straight away. That will select all those frames in orange and we didn't actually go up to frame 20. I've left that off, so let's try again. It's just click in and start dragging straight away and make sure you go all the way to 20. Okay, that's got all of those frames selected. That is one full revolution, one full circle. And you can right click and go copy frames. Now. We want it to spin around next just after 20. So we click in 21 and we go paste frames. Then that'll get us up to 40 with a second revolution, a second spin. So we go into 41, the next one after 40, right click there and go paste frames. We're up to 60, click in 61, right click, paste frames, click in 81 and right click and paste frames. So if we press control enter now, we've got this going round and it'll do our countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. What happened there? We had a glitch. Okay, everything disappears for a minute. That's interesting. That never happened when we practiced doing this. Aha, uh -huh. now if we look at the timeline, somehow we got an extension onto the end of this. So remember, click and drag straight away. We basically want to remove, right click, remove frames and take all of those away. Now it's ending at 100, which will be a problem. Or will it? Let's press control enter and see. It's okay. Oh, there is a little jumpy glitch there. Okay, um, I'm just going to leave that jumpy glitch in because in a real introduction, we'd only have it spin around once and then we'd stop anyway. Uh, but maybe we should be perfect and try and get the the little glitch out we can try and move that guy back one and take this guy and hold him and move him back one and then right click remove frames there and right click remove frames and then we just need to right click and insert a frame for the ending Okay, that was a little bit tricky. That didn't happen when I practiced making this beforehand, but you know, you can right click and just make frames and right click remove frames until it's all even and balanced. So we've got five of those turnarounds. Now we just need to put on the numbers. Five, four, three, two, one, and we're done. Okay, so let's get those numbers happening. All right, so where the numbers are happening, the position of the numbers is just going to be First off, in number one, we need our number five and we need a separate layer to put them on. So lock up that snipping, spinning lane, spinning line layer, because that took a lot of work to do. And let's make another layer. We're on to the last one. This is called the numbers, so numbers. And we've got a keyframe there in number one, ready to go. So on the right hand side in the text tool, click on that text tool and go from library here to properties and we've already got it set up usually this would be 12 point or something like that for the size but these are big numbers so you actually need 200 there so that's how you do that just enter 200 point uh color we need for them is black so that's already set up and we just click anywhere on the stage at the moment and we do our big number five all right now Go to the black arrow tool and we can move that into position. So we'll try and sort of get it looking like it's okay in the center. Now, our next one needs to be at frame 20. So we click in 20. Now, we could insert a keyframe, go to the text tool, do the number four. But what's easiest to do is to copy this one, copy our number five from frame one, 
up to where we are now and then just backspace and edit it in the text tool for it to become number four. So in number 20, just right click and go insert keyframe and then go on your text tool and click in there and backspace and turn this into a four. Okay. And then we can go to, we've got our next one is at 40. So we click in 40 and we just right click, insert keyframe to copy it. Click in there because they're still on our text tool. That is number three. Go to 60. Okay. Right click, insert keyframe to copy. Click in there, backspace. That's number two. Go to 80 here. Make sure you're on the numbers. Uh, sort of layer while you're doing that, right click, insert keyframe, click in, and that's our number one. And up at 100 there, up at the end, we don't actually need anything. Now, just on the black arrow tool, number one doesn't look good not sitting on the crosshair. So that one, we're actually going to click on it and use our left arrow key on the computer keyboard just to move that back a bit. And look, our counter should be done. This should be it. Let's fingers crossed, both fingers crossed, and let's press control and enter. And five, four, three, two, one, boom, we're done. Five, four, three, two, one, we're done. Now I'm not sure about the four. The four doesn't quite look right. So let's find out where that guy is. He's right here at frame 20. Uh, he looks to me as though he just needs to go over to the left a bit. It just doesn't look quite center. Anyway, let's try that. So we got five, four, three, two, one. We're done. Five, four, three, two, one. <coughs> We're done. All right. So that's a great old time film counter, which would be excellent to use as an intro to another flash project we're making. So thank you so much for watching our tutorials like and follow uh, on our YouTube page because we're hoping to add many more of these tutorials there. So that's just youtube.com slash Passy World of ICT or just Google for Passy's World of ICT YouTube or Passy World of ICT YouTube. You'll find it pretty quickly. And that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy making animations with Animate CC.